Malus Darkblade. Now that's a fine specimen of the Dark Elven race, though perhaps not the most clever one. Even one such as I am not insane enough to allow myself to be possessed by a demon, especially not by a demon of Slanesh. Oh my, what depraved thoughts he must struggle with every day. It must be a real head twister. But apparently demonic possession comes with some benefits, since Malus is nigh on unkillable, and he regenerates even when you think he should be dead. Worse, he can allow that demon to fully possess him, turning him into a one-man army that can conquer the entire world. Add to that the sheer might of the Dark Elves, and you have a terrible force on and outside of the battlefield. Welcome everyone, Questine here with my campaign overview guide for Malice Dark Blade of the Dark Elves and Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. Malice is a formidable force on both the campaign and on the battlefield. So let's go over it. He starts in the Northern Chaos Wastes. He also starts with Hag uh, Grief, though he can sell it after he wins his initial battle in order to get some starring money. And that might actually be the smarter thing to do because, well, let's just say it's not necessarily located in the best possible area of the campaign. So once you take your initial settlement, you can get uh, 20,000 money for giving up. So that's going to be a substantial amount of money to get started on your campaign. You start with an army of Bleak Swords, Dread Spears, Dark Shards, Cold One Knights, and Scourge Runner Chariots. You also start, crucially, with a Black Ark, which has, as Black Arcs often do, uh, two Black Ark Corsair units in it at the start of the campaign. So you can uh, start recruiting Black Ark Corsairs from turn one. Now, that in itself is a great deal of power because Black Ark Corsairs... Being a, Black Ark Corsairs are basically a tier 3 unit that you can recruit at tier 1 if you have a Black Ark. What do I mean by tier 3? I mean in the sense that uh, from a regular settlement, you can only recruit Black Ark Corsairs at tier 3, but from a Black Ark, you can recruit them at tier 1. So there is a great deal of power that a Malice Darkblade does have from the very beginning, just purely based on that. Now, faction-wide effects, he is possessed by Tsarkhan, and he wish, uh, whispers for him to do certain missions. Now, these missions will grant you rewards, so you can get more money, other benefits as well during your campaign. Though, of course, that also increases your position. Now, let's talk a bit about the position situation when it comes to Malice Darkblade, because if we look at his Lord effects... It's not necessarily too substantial, though he does get some very substantial benefits in battle over here when it comes down to it. Casualty replenishment, plus 30% for this Lord, minus 30% attrition uh, from all attrition, campaign movement range, uh, plus uh, plus 5%. And also he's immune to Chaos on Vida, Corruption, Chaos Waste attrition, which is very suitable considering he starts in the Northern Chaos Waste. And his lords have a chance to gain loyalty every turn, and he also gets plus free control in the local province and a minus 10% upkeep. Now, here's the thing about Malice Darkblade and what makes him so really, really powerful. He is very powerful in battle because of the possession mechanic. He gets 40% ward save if he's fully possessed. He gets 20% uh, missile strength in his army, uh, 10 melee attack uh, as well as well as getting a diplomatic benefit with Demons of Chaos of plus 50 if you have full possession, though you do suffer from having plus 15 Slaneshi corruption in all your provinces if you go for full possession. So that can be something of an issue, though it is something you can keep under control. But here's the thing when it comes to it. So that's the position, but if you're not possessed, if you have full control, then you do lose minus 25%, uh, 25 melee attack on your factional leader, and you lose the possession ability, which makes him such a, such a powerful lord in battle. So 25 melee attack, losing that, he's still going to be pretty good in battle, to be very, very clear on this. He's just not going to be super duper powerful. Uh, but here's the thing. If you have full control, then you get some ridiculous benefits as well on the campaign side of things. So you're looking at a minus 15 uh, corruption, right of the War Master. Your lords have a chance of gaining two lo loyalty at the beginning of each turn, so you're never going to have to deal with rebellions, and you get 100 growth. Now, 100 growth is plainly 
but ridiculous. See, Dark Elves have a lot of money in their campaign because they can get a, a significant amount of money through looting and sacking settlements in particular. Especially if you have a Black Ark close by. Uh, and with that Black Ark, uh, the Black Ark has the ability to increase your income from sacking settlements and post battle loot. So you can gain a ridiculous amount of money, but generally speaking, one of the issues in a lot of campaigns can be, you know, just growth. Well, you have a ridiculous amount of growth. In fact, one of the best things you can do as Malice Darkblade at the very start of your campaign, like just fight your initial battle all uh, well and good, like um, Malice can win that on his own with out in casualties or we can just auto resolve it as I did and then what you do is you drink the elixir twice and that will uh, give you the significant benefits now the potion here is going to cost you some money every single turn but that 100 growth benefit is plainly ridiculous it will allow you to get settlements faster than the vast majority of legendary lords in the game with the exception of Skaven. I think only the Skaven can do it uh, faster. So 100 growth in all provinces is absolutely insane as a benefit. On top of that, if you have full control, you get every 50 turns, you get the right of the War Master. And this is also plainly ridiculous because what it does is it summons this army. Now, this is an endgame crisis army. Th this is ridiculously powerful. Yes, it is a lot of money to spend on it, but you're looking at an army that's like a tier 5 army. You're looking at black dragons. You're looking at war hydras. And here's the thing. This is not like some bullshit event army like Nakari and Scarbrand have, for instance. No, this is a full-on proper stack. So you don't want the cold ones. You don't want the feral manticores all well and good. You can get rid of them. And you can just keep the Black Dragons, the War Hydras, uh, the Medusae, and these uh, smaller Hydras. So you do have a ridiculous amount of power in this campaign. Either you can solo entire armies with full possession, or you can make your faction incredibly powerful if you're playing as Malice Darkblade. So there's a lot of benefits when it comes to that. And the Dark Elves are in a pretty good spot. Malice just takes them up a notch, a significant notch. Now, I would say Lokir probably has the better campaign situation overall, just because Lokir can recruit a lot of Black Arcs, so he has a lot of potential when it comes to that. But just starting with the Black Arc, having that 100 growth is significantly, uh, is very significant. And just being able to spawn a Doomstack with a proper Lord is also pretty damn ridiculous when you look at it. I would not recommend doing it at the start of your campaign. Anyway. What do you do in this campaign? Well, you have the Demon Prince to uh, to the east, and you might uh, you might want to make some kind of deal with him, diplomatic deal, so that you can avoid having to uh, to march east. Because what you really want to do is you want to march west. Beyond any missions you might get from Sarkon, which are going to change how uh, you're playing the campaign, what you're focusing on the campaign, beyond any kind of missions, your goal should be to march west. Why is that? Well. Partly because of the campaign objective. So your long campaign objective does require you to get the Shrine of Cain and eliminate all the High Elephant factions. So that's why you need to march uh, west. But your short campaign uh, victory condition just requires you to win a quest battle, pretty easy, and occupy 30 different elements. It's better to go west and being able to get good diplomatic relations with both Malekith and Hellebron. And you can occupy the entirety of the northern cast wastes over here make uh, get good relations with Malekith and Hellebron and then eventually confederate them while you're um, also conquering territory along the way dealing with Sigval, dealing with Valkia and then eventually dealing with Alifanar and once that's sorted out once you've captured all of this territory you can go down here and conquer Ulfwan and that's pretty much going to be your campaign like just head on west conquer Ulfwan and then once that's done you do have a long journey ahead of you. Though, crucially, what's what's also pretty significant about this campaign, you do have uh, terrain types, because this is a uh, leftover from Warhammer 2. You have the ability of taking jungles. So, because of that, you can conquer all of Lustria. 
Like you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to this campaign, just because you can conquer all of Norska, you can go east if you so desire. Like you could decide not to just play the Wolf One campaign and instead head east, conquer territory along the way there. Like you, you have a lot of flexibility if you decide not to care about the long campaign victory condition, because it can be a bit of a pain when you're playing an elven campaign, be it high elves or dark elves, to actually achieve it. Um, but you could go for Norska, if you so desired, make friends with the Empire. It's kind of funny, because when you're playing as uh, as Malice Dark played, the Empire will actually love you, because you're fighting all these demonic factions. You're fighting Sigvald, you're fighting Chaos, so all these factions around here, the Empire, Bretonia, all that, they will have good relations with you, because you've been fighting the bad guys all this time. Maybe you just wipe out the Demon Prince very quickly in your campaign as well, just, you know, for the shits and giggles and make a deal with this minor faction of of Nurgle. Though eventually you probably are going to deal with Archeon, the Ever Chosen. It's, it's probably just a better idea to make a deal with the Demon Prince uh, when it comes to it. Maybe just take, maybe just march your army very quickly here and take this territory and trade it to the Demon Prince and that will uh, enable you to get good relations with him. At least a non-aggression pact. Uh, once that uh, that's all sorted out, just march west. The old Sigvald is the only major issue you're going to encounter in this campaign. But the old Sigvald, once Sigvald is dealt with, you're going to be in a really, really good position. Valkia is going to be the uh, the, ma the next major opposition, but Malice is more powerful uh, than her. You also have the ability to just go full on possession every forty turns. Like I would save this for when you're when you really need that uh, power in combat when you're about to fight the Doomstack like Valkia or maybe Sigvald earlier on. Of course, you can also get position through other means as well. But early on, I would say going for full control is just a smarter decision just because of that 100 growth. Though you're unlikely to maintain 100 growth continuously unless you're chugging away potions very quickly. Eventually, though, of course, uh, eventually, like once you've taken 10 provinces, you do get uh, the elixir recipe for free. And that's uh, pretty much the campaign. Great deal of power, great deal of strength. You have a legendary lord that can solo entire armies on his own. Hell, you have a legendary lord that can conquer the entire map on his own. Legend of Total Ward did that on legendary. So there's a great deal of power in Malice because he has regeneration. Uh, he has good casualty replenishment. So he's incredibly good when it comes to it. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications.